Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. May movie thoughts. I really like how Susie is, you know, a kind of metaphor for May and her growing insanity. You know, there are parts of the movie where she's like, Susie is to May what May was to her mother. You know, it's kind of, she she's the one who gets the has to pay for what you know the other character is not happy about. You know, May's mother was a perfectionist and she couldn't handle that things weren't always perfect and May had to pay, especially for her own imperfection. And May very much didn't feel perfect, so Susie had to pay, you know, and the little murmurs, whispers from Susie to May and, you know, the, the glass that is gradually, you know, cracking. And then when she brings the doll to the daycare center, we see that almost all of the cracks in the glass were in her mind, you know, it is the you know, Susie is May. May is frail and she, you know, there's only so much keeping her together, you know, is really. And when the glass breaks, you know, it, that's May's mind going, you know. The the, the, the glass cracking, you know, notice when the glass gets additional cracks, you know, it is May trying to keep herself together, but she can tell that her world is falling apart, and she can't deny it, she can't keep it from happening, you know, it's such as when talking to Adam on the phone, and he's, you know, he's not even hiding it well, he doesn't just say, yes, I have an appointment tonight, he asks her, you know, that's like, he's not even trying to pretend that he doesn't, that he's avoiding her, you know. And, you know, she actually, you know, she, she yells at Susie in that scene, you know, for the, you know, she, she's so frustrated with her world coming apart. I thought that was really effective. Before I talk more about the glass and the blind children, Adam. I thought that he was very convincing and I liked that he wasn't just a one-note, you know, bastard. We can kind of sympathize with, I mean, he could have freaked out far more than he did and it makes sense that he did freak out. You know, it's... She didn't understand. She suddenly felt a strong mutual physical attraction and she couldn't handle it because it was the first time. You're not supposed to experience something like that after so many years of not experiencing it. And I also think that she wanted to possess him. She, she couldn't let go of him and, you know, it that the expression of that is that she, you know, is almost trying to eat him, you know, she, she wants him, she must have him, and so that's her expression of that. And there's the whole animalistic thing of it, which is, you know, sex. The... Uh, now, the, the children the blind children. I don't think that scene is supposed to be entirely realistic. I, in general, I don't think the movie is supposed to be completely, you know, it's, it's a slightly surreal and some of it, it just is in May's mind. It's not trying to be a realistic movie. You don't, you, you can't take everything at face value, at least not as a kind of, you know, 
depiction of what really happened. That's not what it's about, you know, and, you know, you can look to the ending for further proof of that, you know. Obviously, Amy or Ami wouldn't come to life just from, you know, having an eye put on, you know. So the children, you know, you could wonder why the, you know, if, if you were trying to see it as entirely realistic, you could wonder why the adults don't pay closer attention, and why in general, you know, why wouldn't they be more careful around, you know, why is May bringing something with so much glass to, you know, children who can't see? It, it is, you know, there's no reason for that kind of danger there, really. And why would the children just keep, you know, why wouldn't they heed her words? You know, she says no, she, I believe she even says, but there's glass, you know. I don't care if I can see or not, if I hear someone saying, stop right there, there's glass, I'm gonna stop. I think most people would, even children, you know, they're not stupid. But it is a perfect image of, you know, in addition to, as I've already said, the glass breaks and then the doll shatters, you know, it, it's, or it's torn apart, you know, it's sort of... If May is out in the world, she will be destroyed by the rest of the world. If, or if she opens up herself, if she removes herself from her protective shell, you know, of shyness and of, you know, her strategy of non-engagement with the enemy. Yeah. It is such a perfect image of... People don't listen to her and don't respect her, and something she cares about is, you know, ignored by her surroundings. And, you know, and that the thing most precious to her, you know, which is why she brings it in, it was a bad decision, but she makes bad decisions throughout the movie. You know, she wants to share this thing most precious t to her with these blind children, and they destroy it. And the blind children, you know, they couldn't, they, they almost couldn't be more innocent and more kind of, you know, but, you know, still they destroy it. It's like she can't trust anything around her and she can't let her guard down. N not even around, you know, someone like that. I liked her noticing the birthmark on Polly repeatedly and even at one point asking directly, why don't you have it removed? You know, it's a kind of, she, you know, she wants things to be perfect. She needs things to be perfect. It's, it's a very human thing that when you, when you have problems with yourself, you're going to try to fix other people. Or when, you know, when, when there's problems, because, or at least if you don't see a way of solving your own problems, especially, you know, it... And that's, you know, she doesn't feel that she herself is perfect, so she tries to make other people perfect, and she tries to make the perfect friend, you know, and a kind of... And, and that the very ending, it's, it's not just any kind of sign of life from the... from, from Amy. It's that... Adam's hands caress her face, which is exactly what she wanted, you know, she wanted to be loved, she wanted to be cared for, she wanted positive attention, which is also why, you know, the, the line, look at me, you know, she, she
she wants to be noticed and she wants she she can't handle any more rejection and being ignored anymore you know which is also you know with Polly with Amphipolis or what you know for the legs gams she's unhappy because Polly now has gams and she wants her to herself, kind of, you know, it's, and, and also that thing of, you know, that her legs become the legs of Amy, you know, because right from the first time, and she oh, kind of can't handle seeing it, you know, she, she becomes very jealous, so she, she tries to kind of block it, literally. random creepy moment, the not being a chick, I don't know the term for it, but I guess nail extensions or whatever on that woman at the daycare center, you know, with, with Petey, the thing she does with her hands and the nails is just so creepy, and it's just, what is that even? It's like, almost like claws or something. How is that even creepy? It's just... I have no idea. I wasn't going to say this in the review for obvious reasons, you know, spoilers and everything, but the effects were pretty good. And, you know, the, the deaths, you know, it didn't feel like they were repeating themselves. And I thought they tended to be very shocking. You know, it wasn't... I read a snippet of a review that said that this was just essentially a slash movie. I strongly disagree with that. Among other things, we actually do somewhat get to know... I mean, the person you know least about... Well, I guess, yeah, of the people that May kills, the people that we know least about. I would say it's a tie between Gams and new girlfriend, Adam's new girlfriend. The two of them we really don't know very much about. But we still do see a little, you know, they're, they're kind of both playful and, you know, drunk types. They're kind of the antithesis to May. You know, they're very outgoing, very confident, and, you know, excuse me, where May is very... Excuse me. Very direct and kind of honest. They're you know not not like deceiving, but they're kind of joking. Kind of you know, Adam is joking. Is you know, makes some jokes as well. But really, you know, considering the amount of time we spend with them, the characters that you know are most ironic and say the most, you know, are new girlfriend and gams so it's but but yeah you know we we know these people and there really wasn't a single one where I didn't care you know well, I suppose also I don't know I think his name was blank but I'm gonna call him Juju Bees he was also someone we did not know very much. But again, we have a little bit of an idea of, you know, who he is from what little we see. I thought the keeping the cat was just extremely creepy, you know, she keeps it for, uh, we don't know, several nights maybe around her and then she puts it in the freezer and it's just, you know, you see it, you, you even see the open mouth, you know, with the fangs bared and the whole thing, you know, like, it didn't just die, it clearly died, you know, very suddenly, like, you know, we realized that already, but, you know, you see the corpse and it's very clear, you know, and she actually kept it, you know, and the, the brief bit where, I don't know, maybe it was just me. But for a second, I thought she was washing her own leg. 
and then the camera pulls a little bit back and you see that she's standing there cleaning off one of the two chopped off legs. The very ending with Amy moving, I can see a couple of possible explanations. You know, maybe she is dying, not so much from the blood loss, because, you know, it was just an eye, but she now has an open wound leading directly into her brain, and she is caressing a corpse. You know, putting her head against a rotting corpse, you know, several rotting corpses, really. That, you know, that's going to get infected. She quite probably is going to die. And maybe she's hallucinating, you know, as she is dying. Maybe it's just her insanity taking even more hold. You know, maybe... But I, I thought that was a really perfect moment. I, if I recall, I think it was Ebert who, you know, put it that other movies that would have garnered laughs, but the movie earns it. I agree 100%. that is more or less it. Well, about the Jack and Jill, I do somewhat wonder if if maybe she wouldn't have gone as nuts if you know, if they hadn't if he hadn't just showed her shown her that film and that that film you know, hadn't been something he made himself, you know. I thought the use of blood was really effective. You know, all in all, there's not that much blood in this movie. But every single time you see even a drop of blood, it is extremely effective. You know, the, the children crawling in the glass was just devastating. You just wanted it to stop, you know. It, it, their, you know, them getting hurt and the doll being ripped and, you know, May's objection and, and the, the situation spinning out of control. You know, she couldn't stop it. And that was all she wanted to do. And that's also... You know, part of, again, you know, a metaphor for her life. That is just, she can't control situations. They spin out of her control, and, you know, she didn't have the tools to deal with that. She's never been able to deal with that. She just hurts over it. I think it's also good to note that with the ending, she really isn't thinking about if she will, you know, get caught or if it will be any kind of sustainable situation in the long run. It is just, she's just desperate. She just wants a friend, you know, and you know, hence she even sacrifices one of her eyes for it. Apparently that was her lazy eye, however. And one can wonder why she didn't sacrifice the one good eye, but I, I don't know. It maybe it was maybe maybe she actually did take to heart what Polly said that her grandmother had said that you know it was the imperfections that made you know things interesting or whatever the exact words were, which I absolutely that is philosophy I agree with. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.